Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. Insider selling. There's a lot of newspaper articles right now about top CEOs in the US selling their stock shares in the market right now. Is this a signal that the stock market has reached its peak? Getting a lot of questions about this, both on my English channel, Japanese channel, and also on Twitter. So I took the time today to try to do some analysis and I'm gonna try to answer these questions. Is this a dangerous signal for the market? And what is my analysis? And finally, what do I recommend you should do with your positions? For those of you new viewers and subscribers, my name is Dan Takahashi. For details on to who I am, please see the below uh, details area. Um, former Wall Street guy, I've been investing almost all my money since I was 12 years old, mowing lawns in Boston. And then ever since then, uh, I've been investing almost everything. Joined Wall Street uh, full time uh, when I was 21 and then uh, joined the hedge fund industry and then created my own fund with a partner uh, when I was 26. Sold my stake in that fund when I was 30, then traveled the world about 60 different countries and came back to Tokyo, Japan, where I was born at the end of 2019. And now uh, at basically at the beginning of this year, I just started YouTube, social media, everything for the first time. Got about 300,000 followers worldwide and uh, just started this English channel recently about a month and a half ago. So what I, I would appreciate if you would subscribe, uh, press the subscribe button uh, below and follow me going forward. So today's topic, I'm going to try to break down on three main themes. Number one, what is this article? What is this news about insider selling? What does this mean? We'll look at this in a little bit more detail because I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about uh, these articles that are coming out. Number two, we'll take a look at the charts right now. Are these insiders correct? Is there a topping signal right now in the U.S. markets? Especially right now, I think a lot of people are worried about my recommendation in XLF, buying XLF, shorting QQQ. I'll give you an update on that. Number three, at the very end, my recommendation, what I think you should do, my trade idea, my investment idea, uh, based on this video today. So let's get started. First and foremost, what is this news? What is this mumbo jumbo going on about uh, executives selling their shares? So there's a lot of uh, articles all over the place about people selling their uh, stock market shares. We're seeing executives like Larry Fink here. Uh, big, big corporate insiders are selling their uh, stocks right now. Um, and this is Getting a lot of see, uh, Jeff Bezos is selling three billion dollars in Amazon shares. Uh, Moderna executives are selling their shares. Uh, James Gorman, the CEO of Morgan Stanley, uh, tons of people are selling their stock shares right now in companies in which they are CEOs of uh, or their management of. Now, is this a signal that the market is topping? Is do they know something that we do not? Uh, when people on the inside sell, it's called insider selling. They're not doing anything illegal because, in this case, they are reporting to the market. They're reporting the filing with the SEC that they are selling their shares. So it's fine and they're not report there this report is coming afterwards so they've already sold their shares uh and now the report is coming out so this report coming out is getting a lot of people excited to think okay is the market at a top right now now looking specifically at one uh, article here let's say cnbc here uh this talks in a little bit more detail about what's going on executives selling the stock uh, as the market experiences this epic rebound, the ratio of companies which insider buying compared to insider selling. So this is insiders, whether the management, uh, you take the ratio of the number of the buys and the number of the sells, right? Numerator is the buying and it's, uh, new, uh, denominator is the selling. And that ratio is now at 0 0.27, the lowest level since at least 2000, according to Washington Service. Um, so you might read that and that may catch you off guard and say, wow. This is the lowest level of insider buying in a long time in 20 years. Is this a sign of the market peak, right? Right? Mm, be careful guys when you read this. Uh, first of all, so the number one thing I wanna look at is this, this 0 0.27. Uh, look at the chart here. This is the companies with insider selling outpacing buying. This is the 0 0.27 chart. This is the ratio of buying to selling of insiders. Take a look at this chart. Okay, it's at 0 0.27. It is at maybe a 20 year low perhaps, but take a look very, very closely at this 0 0.27. It usually sits or close to this level throughout most of history. So yes, it might be an all time low and that makes big headlines in the newspapers, but do not be misled by these headlines. It's nothing that special. 
a 0.27. Okay, that's maybe the all-time low. But uh, if you take out a lot of these statistical anomalies, the historical average looks like it's around 0.5. And usually it sits around 0.27 uh, or 0.3 level, 0.4 level when the market is going up. So throughout most of uh, the last 10 years, if you take out, let's say, 2011 and 2020 with the coronavirus crash and the European crisis in 2015, if you take out these three occurrences, almost the entire time it was sitting between 0.3 and 0.5. So yes, now it's a little bit lower than usual, but I would be very careful into making a very big deal out of this. Also, looking very specifically, the number of shares being sold. Look, uh, James Gorman, the Morgan Stanley CEO, he sold about $8 million worth of stock. That's tiny for a market cap of a company this big. Uh, same with uh, Larry Fink, selling, selling shares in BlackRock. He sold $24 million worth. Yes, that's a lot of money for us, but for uh, for them, that is very, very small. For the market cap of uh, BlackRock is is much, much larger. Same with United Health. Uh, same with a lot of these companies. So, you know, Jeff Bezos, he sells $3 billion with the Amazon stock. It's a lot of money, guys, but it's a very little small impact of the market. And these guys are selling and we're looking at this ratio overall. Yes, it's very, very low, but historically, it's not an anomaly, right? It's low, but it's not an anomaly. And that's the key here. Key takeaway that I want to tell everybody here. It is not an anomaly. Next, guys, let's talk about uh, looking at the charts. Uh, are they, do these guys know something in the market that we don't? Uh, let's take a little look at the charts and analyze the U.S. markets here and sort of give them an update on what's going on. So looking at the U.S. markets, uh, the first market that I usually focus on is, of course, the S&P 500 index. Now, looking at the S&P 500 index, uh, let's see here. S&P 500, where are you? Looking at the S&P 500 index, from what I remember, it is still continuing to go in an uptrend at the moment. Uh, the trend has not changed for the MACD here. Uh, volume is very, very subsided, but, you know, it's been sort of going in and out. The MACD has been... It's been reliable usually for the most part since the coronavirus crash ended. Uh, it's had a few times where it flirted with us. It gave us false signals and it didn't work. But for the most part, it's been working. And now it's finally ticking up for uh, how to use MACD and etc. Please see my video previously uh, on how to use MACD. So right now, it's still in an uprange right now. Um, Stochastics right now is signaling sort of an uprange. Uh, again, the volume is very, very low. When I look at the volume, I try and look at the ETF instead of the index because the index has a lot of weird stuff in there like dividends, rebalancing, etc. So the ETF right now is very, very low with volume at the moment. So um, yeah, it's hard to very, it's, it seems like it's in an uptrend. It's just in a very shallow uptrend at the moment and it's near the top of its Bollinger Band. So it seems like it may, uh, it's going to be difficult for it to suddenly jump up uh, higher very quickly, but it's still in a uh, uptrend nonetheless. Uh, one other thing I want to sh show you guys is the fact that the S&P right now uh, is close back to its all time high before the coronavirus shock. Now, this is going to catch a lot of headlines and these levels are usually very, very uh, big emotionally for the market. So the all time high in the market uh, for the S&P uh, for before coronavirus was around 3,400, a little bit below 3,400, 3,380 or 3,090, something like that. So right now we're at 3,350. Uh, if it goes up over another one or two percent, then it will be at an all time historical high. Now. Looking at this, it seems to me like we're going to be continuing an uptrend. There's probably a lot of people in the market who are uh, still very, very hesitant to be buying. Uh, and there's probably a lot of orders around this 3380, 3390 level. That's just how algorithms work. People put in a lot of orders here, sell orders, limit orders, stop orders. Uh, it's an all time high. It's going to be a very emotional level. So my guess is it's probably going to try to break this all time level. Probably will break it. And then stops will get triggered and then they'll be forced buying forced it's called short cover selling i uh, sorry short cover buying uh, people will be forced to cover their shorts because stop orders will get triggered and then the market will probably break 3400 and we go into a lot of uh, uh a lot of a lot of newspaper articles all around the world about how uh the u.s market is at all-time highs uh i think that is probably what is uh going to happen at the moment just looking at the charts now interestingly 
the NASDAQ, which is the tech index, is showing a little bit of a different story here. Uh, the NASDAQ index was down 1.1% on Friday. Very interestingly, even though the U.S. markets, the S&P had almost no movement and the Dow was up a little bit, uh, the NASDAQ was down. Uh, so this is very interesting. Right now, the NASDAQ MACD is not very discernible to use. Uh, so is the stochastics very difficult to get a trend right now on the nasdaq but i do want to point out everybody that look guys the nasdaq is up 38 percent this year right the dow is only up four that's a big difference between the two humongous difference right uh obviously there's reasons for this because of the coronavirus crash a lot of transportation companies industrial companies have been hampered uh in growth due to coronavirus but this is a big big gap so I will not be surprised to see this gap continue to close uh, as in the Dow will probably outperform the Nasdaq into year end. We'll see. Uh, I think we'll see more and more days like this where the Nasdaq continues to go lower. Uh, Nasdaq continues to outperform versus the US index. One last thing I want to show is volatility. Now, right now it's summer, so things are very slow. Uh, summer lull. I think this is going to continue until probably early September. Uh, usually that's what happens. Labor Day is when people take people take a lot of vacation in New York and uh, Connecticut, uh, especially right now with coronavirus. I think people are just taking time off uh, and then they'll probably go back to the computer screens uh, back at home, working from home, uh, probably after Labor Day. Now, the VIX is definitely uh, in a declining trend, but it flirted here. It gave a false signal, so I don't like using it. I'm actually looking more at VVIX. So the volatility of volatility is much smoother uh, over the last few months. Uh, and this right now is showing a, a declining signal. Uh, so I think that it's likely that we're going to see this continue to decline, uh, probably back towards the pre-corona uh, levels, back to below 100 uh, and then that would probably instigate a push higher in the U.S. market. So based on this analysis, what is my recommendation to you based on your portfolio? Uh, first and foremost, guys, today's recommendation, as usual, it is short term, not long term, short term. Uh, for uh, details on short term, long term, please see my other videos. But basically, I advocate to everybody separating your investment into long-term 70 to 90 percent and then short-term 30 to 10 percent so today's video is short-term uh short-term guys what do i recommend look i recommend in my opinion you continue with the exact same position you had before uh xlf uh and qqq this has been a nice ratio especially these bank stocks I recommended buying these bank stocks here and then I got started starting to get worried here a little bit and now it looks like it's back going back up and this is it looks like it went up Friday 2% on um, pretty nice volume even though the US markets were very slow not much was going on the Dow was barely up the S&P was barely up even then XLF went up 2.1% that's a very strong sign you want to be buying strength selling weakness and again QQQ uh, which is the tech index uh, it's just the NASDAQ 100 index. It was down 1.15% on Friday. So you want to be selling uh, weakness and buying strength. I've been advocating this ratio, buying XLF and selling QQQ. I believe I started advocating it around July 20th, something around that. Please check the videos in the past if you don't believe me. Uh, and then it sort of went up and then it went down. I think that this is still the... Uh, probably wise trades to put on but given that it's summer lulls right now we don't know what can happen probably net long a little bit so maybe two to one is what i would advocate so uh whatever you're short for qqq at least two times the amount in dollar terms that you are long at xlf because right now i think the trend is a little bit stronger in xlf to go up uh than for qqq to go down at the moment so i think this is just a hedge so you buy a little bit more of the xlf you continue to buy strength in the market because right now it's summer lulls for the next few weeks i think this is going to continue and it's very rare to see a pickup of volume in a sector like this so it looks like this is probably going to be a good trade i would continue to put this on hold on to this or maybe even buy it now i think it's not too late but if you're going to buy it sell a little bit of qqq just as a hedge uh, because again market summer lulls you don't know what's going to happen it's very thin markets you can have one little piece of news and then the markets just fall very fast so i would recommend putting on a hedge Thanks so much, guys, for watching my video. Let me know your comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, I read your comments every single day, guys. I'm sorry I can't reply to everybody's comments because I get over 1,000, sometimes 2,000 a day, including emails and uh, LinkedIn messages and Twitter, YouTube, etc. So I generally try to heart uh, what I read or uh, press a like button or whatever, but 
just to show you that I am reading it, me and my assistant, we are reading it, but I can't answer everything. Uh, but I really appreciate your support and your comments. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. Uh, please subscribe to my channel below. And uh, if you like this uh, content, uh, please let me know by uh, forwarding this channel to any of your buddies and friends and family. I would very much appreciate your support. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great weekend. Wear your masks. I know it sucks. It's hot. Yes, I hate it too. But wear your mask. Be safe. Uh, and I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks so much.